Hey, it's Derek from Poor Golf Custom. Just to follow on in our kind of track man fitting series, I'm gonna talk about irons. Okay, so if you've got an older set of irons, let's say they're five, maybe six years old, I wanna to talk to you about how we're using multi-materials and speed retention across the face to get the ball to go further. Now, people say, oh, well, I don't need the ball to go further, but what I'm trying to do is create efficiency here in our fitting sessions. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It'll help us a lot. And like this video if you want more, and I will do more like this. Um, so if I'm trying to get the ball to go further, I'm trying to create more of an efficiency. So if, if the swing is a certain way, I'm trying to make the ball go further because then the golfer gets better tempo, better rhythm. It's easier to get the ball to do what he wants it to do and he's not trying to mule the ball out there all the time. So speed isn't everything, but it can help an awful lot of other things. It can also make you much more efficient, which is kind of where I'm going with this. Okay, so when I talk about efficiency, I'm talking about ball speed off the face. Now, you can jack the lofts on, on iron, so you can take a seven iron, turn it into a six iron, it'll go further, but I'm not talking about that. That's the kind of the cheating way of doing it. What I'm talking about is ball speed. So maybe, let me show you something. Come here to track man, come here. So this is an iron fitting that we did. I want you to look here. So look at the club, club speed is 77 and look at the ball speed at 102. So this is the, the, the customer's irons down in the bottom. So it's the light blue, but just check out club speed, ball speed, and then total distance, okay? And then I'm gonna show you when we change the head, something that's more, I guess, technologically advanced, bit more speed across the face, you can see the club head speed's moved up. Now I've done that through the way that I've manipulated the shaft, I got the shaft to work a bit more to get a bit more club speed up, but look at the ball speed, way up. And look at the distance, now it's way up. So all of a sudden we've moved this client up nearly 20 yards, like if we go backwards, you'll see it there, 141, 164, 163, and the consistency of that is what I'm kind of more interested in. So it's efficient and it's consistent, but what I'm doing is I'm using the multi-material, I'm using the tech that's in the irons, I'm using speed retention across the face for a more consistent distance, so it's better grouped, and ultimately, that's how I'm getting the ball to go further and go better. Okay, let's talk about landing angle. This is quite important because if the ball is coming out further and it's too low and it's coming in too low a pitch, you gotta be really careful about landing angle. I'm usually looking around that sort of 50 degrees, 48 to 50 degrees on most clubs to get that landing in the angle in right and then manipulating the loft and the settings on the club to get the spin right so that I'm holding greens. You don't want something that's going really far and really flat and not holding on. Remember the lofts, lofts are getting stronger so we will manipulate lofts based on trackman data to get that perfect landing angle and pitch and stop. Okay, distance gapping, why is this important? All right, so if you get the correct lofts based on each golfer and you set the build up on the set so that the, each iron has the right amount of loft between each club, you'll get the exact the right amount of distance based on each club and each club in the set. However, as you can see from that last session, the ball's going much further, so you gotta make sure that you're making sure that you're covering the back end. I said it before in a lot of different uh, reviews that we've done, gap wedges. Get pitching wedge and gap wedge, you're gonna need it because if everything moves up in distance, you're gonna create this massive gap at the end. All right, dispersion. How am I creating more consistency? It's a lot to do with the speed retention across the face from the new tech, so, you know, the Cobra Forge Tech Arc Irons, the P790s, these kind of club heads are giving us great speed retention, but really it's coming down to old school knowledge. I have the understanding of how clubs operate and I'm using the shaft and the way that the shaft operates to dial in to the golfer's tempo and create more consistency. What do I mean by more consistency? Well, it's a lot to do with balance. Again, come here, let me show you. So here's the iron before. You can see the massive dispersion here in terms of his own club. And then we move up and you can see I've created the consistency here, but I wasn't quite getting the right type of distance that I wanted. So I moved up into a better tech iron. And these are the last two clubs. You can see the consistency much tighter, much more together, better consistency than his own. And this is why we can move the club, the golfer forward is because we're getting it further, but also the dispersion is much tighter. So that's the right kind of shaft flex. That's the right kind of balance weight. And that's me building the club to suit the golfer, irrespective of how he delivers the club to the ball. It's all about the fitting. If you're thinking about getting a set of irons, that's a few of the things that you need to be looking at so you can get more consistency, better ball flight, and much better efficiency from your golf swing.